Most people procrastinate their way to mediocrity. Take the risk. Don't talk about it. Start doing something today. More advice like this today on Business Brain, the Entrepreneur's Show, episode 403 for Wednesday, October 26th, 2022. And welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take things like that and we apply our business. We take problems in life, sometimes in business, sometimes just in our lives, whatever it is. And we apply our business brains to them to achieve better outcomes. That's really what it's all about. And to learn more about ourselves, sponsors for this episode include Shopify. We're at Shopify.com slash SBS. You get a 14-day trial and full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. We'll talk more about them in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm Shannon Jean. And I realize it doesn't really matter where I am. Um, hopefully, you know, I'm in your ears right now or in your car. And hopefully, I, I'm working my way into your business brain over time as you listen to this show. I like it. Well, you've worked your way into my business brain. I, I, like that. No, it's true. Like, I, I really appreciate being able to not only share this advice together with you, but to learn from your advice. I mean, it like, this is oh, a, same with you. Yeah. Yeah. Same. same. And, it's and, great. Dude, well, part of this, uh, and, and we could actually probably do a whole show on this concept of, of, uh, reiterating it's almost like an affirmation it and is when, when when i get to come on the show and talk about the things that i believe deeply in and, and, techniques and tactics that have worked very well for me in my business uh, and in my personal life, uh, it, it just reiterates that to me. And it's a self-fulfilling kind of thing. So Absolutely. Uh, I'm definitely the beneficiary of this as well. Like we, we always argue about, I'm learning the most here every week. Well, I've learned something this week that I'm going to share with you, Shannon. Uh, All right. I, I'm helping someone uh, who recently uh, had some property foreclosed upon. Okay. Oh. A non-optimal scenario, obviously. Uh, sure. There's, there's certainly an argument to be made that the business brain should have been, uh, could have been involved, would have been helpful to have been involved, you know, much earlier in this process. But sometimes that's not, you know, the second best time is today, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, which is fine. Okay. Here we are. This is what we're dealing with. Fine. Okay. Uh the question was, did the property sell for more? It was, it was, there was a foreclosure auction. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, I, evidently that's how these things work. I don't, I know, I, like I'm not in this business on either side right. of it. Yeah. Uh, I. Right. It, yeah right. So I, I just didn't know. Uh, but the way it works is, you know, the, the county is in some way involved to, to sort of handle the auction in some way that, you know, they auction it off. They announce the times and the dates. If you're paying attention, you'll see those on the, on the courthouse steps, right? Uh, well, or or at the front, uh, you know, at the the street of the property's ah. address. So you oh, can't go on okay. the prop, at, right at the address. Yep, you can see it. You can't go in. You know, that's that's Got how it. these things work. Yeah, um, but the question was: was the amount paid? more than the amount owed because it's the bank who initiates this foreclosure. Their, okay, okay. their only claim is the amount of principal and presumably some fees and et cetera uh, that remains on the loan. It, they don't, sure. if it sells for more than that, the bank uh, doesn't necessarily get to keep the, the surplus proceeds. In theory, those surplus proceeds would go to anyone who has a claim to them. Uh, the, former property owner would be chief amongst them. But if someone else had put a lien against the property, they could ah. potentially also have a claim to these. Right. But the fun part is none of that information is made uh, evident to the former homeowner because oh. it's one of those things where, as I'm learning, if the, uh, if no one makes a claim, well, then other people who don't deserve yeah. the money stand to profit. And it's a huge oh. business. And as I'm learning, this happens not just with foreclosures, but like tax liens and things like, like, you know, it's not, not mortgage for not just mortgage foreclosures, but if there was a tax lien, the same thing right. would happen. The town multi-billion dollar business. So, okay. Uh, it's been a couple of months 
we've been trying to look up like, okay, you know, where in the public files are we going to be able to find the the foreclosure deed or some details about it? You know, I've been checking uh, various places and nothing came up. And then one day recently, we started getting phone calls from an asset recovery company that said, hey, there is there is there is, there is uh, you know, hundreds of thousands oh, yeah. of dollars waiting for you. We can go get it for you. And it was uh, like, OK, all right, like, fine. They're it. probably scammers, but like, like, OK, this is interesting. Yep. The number that they came up with was not completely unreasonable. It was higher than I would have expected it to be. But, you know, in today's market, okay. like I don't you know, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't just like preposterously large. It was like, wow, if that's really true, that what a nice Little thing, yeah. you know, silver lining to this particular cloud. Okay, great. So I figured, all right, if in fact these people are uh, telling the truth, then I should, uh, I should just call the the bank that formerly held the loan. So I called the bank. Ah, oh, there you go. You know, let's start there. So yeah. I talked with the bank. This is with permission of the person who who went through all of this stuff, of course, you know, and then the bank needed permission right. to talk to me and all those things. But that, that was fine. I, I offered to help out. It's, um, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with these weird conversations. It's that, you know, that's like part of the business brain lesson here is is just, you know, be be willing to ask people questions that might seem aggressive. Yeah, but th like, sure. Yeah. So fine. So I, I call up and I say, hey, you know, yada, yada. Here's how here's what's going on. Uh, can you, oh yes, we'd be happy to help you. They forward me along to the right person. Okay. Yep. Um, the first thing the bank starts with is, okay, I, I have the file in front of me now. Uh, no, it, it's a $0 balance on the mortgage. I'm like, yeah, I kind of figured that after. A, okay. A, a, right. Yes. I think that was the point of you doing this. Oh option. yeah. Cause on the flip side, if it's sold for less, the bank would still try to May, recover those funds. From maybe. maybe. We, like there's, or, there's at a minimum probably issue you a 1099 yes. uh, so they could write it off. So they right? could write yeah. it off. Yeah, exactly. Something yeah. like that would happen. But they were like, okay, yeah. yep, no, it's it's $0. I'm like, okay, that's great. But was there a surplus? And they're like, oh, well, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm not really sure, but it's a $0 balance. I'm like, okay, great. Mm. And and so I I I did what I would normally do. I, I painstakingly went through it politely, but as if they were a child, explained you know the 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 property was likely worth x the mortgage yeah. worth was worth y if there was more than one person that showed up at this auction it sold yes. for more than y if there was only one person it probably only sold for y which would have been a shame you know so there yeah. was some potential equity on the table the question is is there realized equity on the table and and the guy was like oh i understand what you're asking okay you know what let me check goes away 5 minutes comes back uh, yeah, the property sold at a loss, but we're going to eat that loss. You have a zero dollar balance. I'm like, oh, huh. that's, a, that's a shame. <laughs> okay. So now okay. I have the bank telling me this. I have this, you know, asset recovery firm fr from who knows where, although their better business bureau rating is, is fairly substantially high. Hmm. Like, you know, they seem pretty okay. legit. Um, I mean, they're in a scammy business. They're in a slimy business. They're in a business yeah. that no one really wants to have to deal with, uh, you know, but it like, okay, fine. So I'm like, all right, well, somebody's lying to me and it's probably these scammers. So, uh, you know, th these asset recovery people, I, I was calling them scammers. Right. So I get on the phone with them like, OK, can, can you send me a copy of the contract that you're going to want this person to sign to, to go on board with you? And I okay. and they're like, yeah. of course, sure. No problem. And I and I even said, I said, you know, it's, it's just weird to me. I said, I called the bank uh, recently and they told me there was, a, you know, that it sold for a loss. And, he, and, and the guy said something very interesting to me. He says, yeah. Uh, this was Rocket Mortgage. I'm happy to give the bank's name here. Uh, he okay, said, yeah. Rocket Mortgage is, he's like, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a salesperson. He's like, but what I'm going to say is Rocket Mortgage, you are about to find that Rocket Mortgage is your sworn mortal enemy. And I was <laughs> like, okay, that's interesting, yeah, that's interesting okay. right? Like few people say things like that yeah. without like being able to back it up. I'm like, all right, well, cool. Send me the agreement. Like, fine. So I read through the agreement. There is nothing in there that would commit uh, this other, you know, the person who formerly owned the property to anything other than agreeing to pay a percentage as a commission if and when this company were able to collect. And the percentage was okay. a tiered thing depending on, dollar, you know, the amount of dollars that they were able to collect. Uh, but but like a hundred but a hundred percent of it was 
you will never owe us anything unless we collect we on your property. Oh. Right. Like if we need to hire My an bad. attorney, that's on us. All the filing things. They even said to me, look, if you're going to be the one handling this, you'd need a power of attorney. We'll take care of that. We'll cover the fees for making that happen. Not that it's huge. You just need a notary and yeah. you're good to go. But like still, they were – you know, they're used to dealing with people that aren't comfortable dealing with this kind of stuff. And then that's great. But they, you know, they were okay. very polite. And I'm like, okay, so what's the scam again? Like I'm asking myself, yeah. what's their thing? And so I, I'm like, wait, this information must be public if this yes. asset recovery. That, that was going to be my question. Yeah, I've got to find the county it. involved. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I did. I called the county. Uh, they were like, yeah, the foreclosure deed would be filed with us. But usually it takes a little while. And I said, well... They're like, and looking at the timing, I'm not convinced we'd have it yet. And I said, well, we've, we've been getting these calls from, you know, this, <laughs> this company. They, pr if, if, if they're legit, this is public. And they're like, okay, great. Yeah, they've already course. looked at it. Right? They've already, yeah. somebody else has already seen it or they're completely making this up, which would just be, they had too many details to, to like make this up. So, okay. uh, so I, I it's, you know, the woman at the County was like, but let me look, give me the information. And so I gave her information. She looks it up and she's like, oh yeah, it's here. I'm like, amazing. Can you tell me what was paid for the property? Like, I, you know, I don't need to know yeah. anything else. And she's <laughs> like, she's like starting to read me, you know, the book and page number so I can go look it up myself online, which of course I did afterwards. And she gives me the number and it's exactly what I would have expected it to be if this asset recovery firm was telling the truth and uh -huh. Rocket Mortgage was lying. And wow. Yeah. Right. So my mind That's is like pretty evil, right? Well, it gets That's more pretty it, evil. It gets more evil. So I uh -huh. called, I'm like, thank you so much. You, you saved my life. This is amazing. You know, I, yeah. so I got, I, I went online and I had to pay $8 to print a copy of, or to save a PDF okay. of a copy of the foreclosure deed. So now I have this, I, it's like, okay, now I can actually do what I like to do. You know, I can, I can. So I called rocket mortgage back, started from scratch. Didn't tell him I'd talk to him the day before or anything. And uh, and I just said, hey, you know, same sort of thing. And they get someone, finally get someone on the phone in the recovery department, their own recovery department. And uh, and I said, yeah, hey, so here's the thing. Um, I, I, you know, we have a copy of the foreclosure deed, and I'm just wondering how we go about getting the proceeds for this. I didn't let them walk themselves into a trap. I wasn't interested in that. I'm just interested in getting this person their money. You know, I'm not, I stand to gain yeah, nothing yeah. other than knowledge here, which clearly I've yes, gained. Yes. And, uh, and the woman, as soon as I got to that point, it went from all friendly to all business. And she's like, we won't be sending you that money. And she's what? like, because it was foreclosed, she started with this BS line because it was foreclosed upon. I know this is like, this is, I, I told you you were going to love this story. And she's like, because of this, uh, we, you aren't do any of these proceeds. It just goes back to like Fannie Mae or whatever. And, and they absorb this. And so like all the things that this guy was telling me were true. And, and I'm wow. like, no, I don't. I like I I'm not an attorney, but I have researched enough of the the yeah. statutes here to know that what you're saying isn't definitively true. That may be the end result of this if no one takes action. But th th like, th there are people out there, and and one of them is the person that I'm talking about that have a claim to this money. And she's like, well, that's you're not going to get it from us. And I said, so you're telling me I need to hire an attorney? She said, well, you can do whatever you want. Um, anytime wow. someone said that to me, that's the next phone yeah. call is when I've, I've hired. So that's attorney. part of their business model. Basically. It is exactly, exactly. And it's legal. Evident. You know, my, I've talked to, wow. to a few people about this and here's the thing. Fannie Mae has to like deliver and guarantee mortgages that are probably not that they know are going to fail. Right. Like by statute, yeah. they have to do this. There's, you know, there's laws, obviously lots of them about yeah. mortgages. Yeah. But my guess is somewhere in the the process of agreeing and compromising and creating those laws that allow people to get mortgages, there was an agreement made that, OK, yeah, look, you don't it. You are not obligated to 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 go out of your wow. way to distribute yeah, these proceeds. So I'm like, OK, before we give away what what was going to be 15 percent of That's the a proceeds, good story. It, right. <laughs> So I called an attorney. Uh, I, I got referred to a, a real estate attorney and they okay. they uh, they were like, yeah, look, this is probably, you know, 
maybe five hours of work. They're like, you could probably do it yourself. I'm like, yeah, it's not my rodeo best to let, you know, them pay you to do this. But they were like, yeah, it's going to cost, you know, um, a couple of grand uh, worth of attorney's okay. time, which was going to be far, far less than the 15 percent that the asset recovery yes. company wanted. So, so, you know, that that was there were two options on the table now. But I, like, I think either one of them is going to result in in this, yeah. this surplus being collected. I, that, I, uh, yep. You know, I am. <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with your your weird. flabbergastedness. Yes. Uh, yeah. It it just reaffirms my. Uh, internal bias that large institutions are just, they do not work in the best interest of us, the people. Certainly you know, true of the banks. Uh, Never believe yeah, the banks. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's a, a large corporate institution, whether it's the a bit like banking institution, well, I mean, don't get me started on the large government institutions. Sure. It's, they lose their connection to us. And it's, I, I mean, that concept of someone's going through tough times, obviously some devastating things have happened in their life to lose their home, right? And th that balance, that delta, could be just the stepping stone they need to recover, right? Yes. And here, this institution, that's obviously worth billions of dollars. I mean, they, you know, stadium, this kind of thing. I, I, I know a little background about that oh, yeah. company. Um, and their policy is to keep it and, yes. and, to, and put it under the revenue, uh, column. I mean, that's pretty evil, man. And, and I don't know if a lot of people know about that, but I didn't. I'm going to be telling this story for a long time. Yeah, man. Cause that really, it really pisses me off. Yeah. I, I know it, it pissed it, me it, off too, but it's just, yeah. I'm shocked. I, I, I. I guess I shouldn't be because I have, <laughs> I, know, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, no, but I, I like you know these things sort of as a as a general concept, but when you yeah. see it in action and very specific, like it was it was made abundantly clear to me that they weren't just going to offer to stroke a check. Yeah, and I I just can't. I can even, even see if they said, "Hey, we we really have incurred this extra you know these thousands of dollars oh. in this process." And yeah. da, 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 da. That's very reasonable. Oh, they, they, they I'm sure they've already assessed right. fees on all this, of course, yeah. Yeah. and as well but they the, should. The, yes, I, I will. I will tell you, I broke up a very. Um, it was a good business partnership. I had a company that I owned with some uh, folks, and they also owned an insurance company. Hmm. And I, I, I learned a, a valuable lesson because I, it was the only time in my life where I gave up control of the accounting department. And I thought, okay, these guys know what they're doing. I'll focus on the deals and generating revenue. But one day I was happy. I, I started hearing a lot of calls about customers that just were complaining that they weren't getting refunds. Sure. And I, I brought it up to my partners and said, Hey, there's gotta be a problem here. What's going on? Is this not counting? And their concept, cause they were in the insurance industry. They said, well, in the insurance industry, we don't give refunds unless you call us and file a claim to get the refund. Yep. And I said, well, we're not in the insurance you know, industry. We're in the computer business. And when somebody sends something back, you have to give them their money. Because I couldn't understand why this account had hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. Yeah. That rightly belonged to our customers. And and uh, we, it, I mean, I drew, a, I mean, it was a little bit more involved in that. But that was the straw that broke the camel's back where I said, okay, it's time for me to get away and get out of yeah. this uh, this relationship. I, Man, I, that, I, woo, it, that's I, a, thank you for sharing that story. And, and, uh, that's, that's brutal and, and good on you for representing your, uh, your friend and helping them get to the bottom of it. Hey, you ever been to an open mic night? One thing I love about those is how they make it possible for anyone to step up and try stand up. The thing I love about our sponsor, Shopify is how they are the all in one commerce platform that make things simple for anyone to step up to start, run, and grow a successful business. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. And with Shopify, you'll create an online store in your own vibe. You'll discover your new customers 
and you can grow the following that keeps those customers coming back. Shopify has all the sales channels sorted so your business keeps growing from an in-person POS system to the all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And once your store is live, Shopify makes getting paid simple by instantly accepting every type of payment. Shopify grows with your business anywhere thanks to their endless list of integrations and third-party apps. Literally everything you can think of from on-demand printing to accounting to chatbots, everything you need to customize your business to your needs is already in your hands. This is why Shannon and I have used Shopify in the past for our businesses because they just take care of all of this stuff. They make it easy. They do what they're good at. You do what you're good at. Money is made. Ka-ching, right? That's right. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash SBS to start selling online. When? Today. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, let's, um, let's make learning a game, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. I, I love this. Uh, you shared this uh, you tip, this kind of framework from this uh, this guy, Dickie Bush, you know, and, and first I was like, well, yeah, there's so many people pitching this kind of stuff. But as I read through the concept, I, I you know, confirmed so much of what I already believe, which is great. <laughs> and so <laughs> but then there was some really good uh, twist to it that I've missed. And I even recognized one thing that I don't do very well that's held me back. So ah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk about it today on the, on the show. Um, and, you know, t tell us what is the single most powerful skill Dickie Bush thinks that you need to or that you can develop to succeed yeah and i'll link to this in the show notes the single most powerful skill you can develop according to dickie bush is learning quickly and he goes on to frame this he says the way schools teach us to learn is a horrible way to learn in the real world textbooks worksheets flashcards all of it is a waste now there's some hyperbole here but that's how you sell stuff so you sell an idea right uh he says instead Use this simple three-part framework to rapidly learn anything. And he says the key to learning anything is seeing it as a game. So let's let's dig into that a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I, he, I like the, uh, the gamification concept, I think, is, is pretty powerful. Yeah, he says every skill is a game. And he says, therefore, there are rules, prizes, losers, winners, shortcuts, and different levels. And he says the three-part framework to win every time is immediately start playing, totally immerse yourself, and then iterate and tighten your feedback loop. So let's go through each of those yeah. three, right? I love, yeah, and I love his first thing because we've talked about it uh, for over 400 episodes. It's action, right? Yes. Th this is a call to action. It's that y you need to start, stop thinking and start doing, you know, and really get yourself going because uh, your it's your actions that are going to propel you, right? You kind of build this self-fueling system. And as you take action, that's going to push you a lot further than sitting down and trying to plan. And for, I mean, there's people that have been planning to start a business or, you know, start a side hustle their entire life and they're still planning it. And you want to go out and start today. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He says, don't think about starting. Don't prepare to start. All of that is procrastination. You have to start playing and losing quickly. And this is, yeah, I think a, a, a really important part of this framework. He says, you will suck for your first 20 tries of any new game, your first 20 ads, your first 20 videos, your first 20 Twitter threads, cold calls, workouts, photographs, all of them will suck. And that's a good thing. And I think yeah. this is super important because so many of us, especially those of us that occasionally are led to believe that we're the smartest person in the room, uh, that may or may not be true in, <laughs> in some of those instances, but those of us who have been led to believe it, yeah. Get ourselves, and I've certainly caught myself doing this, into a scenario where it's like, well, if I'm not an expert, I I can't do this. And of course, the reality is, the expert is comes from experience, and there's no way to be an expert without doing it. 
And hey, if you're not an expert, that means you're not good at it. Or you're, you're you know, I mean, it, yeah. if you've never you done it before, that. you got, yeah, you got to get there. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I, I, when I read this, I was trying to think back and go, okay, you know, where did I, you know, so many times in my business career that this has happened. And, and even back to the beginning where I wanted to be in some sort of business with Apple and with the Mac, you know, I loved it. And I was like, how can I do this? This would be just amazing because this thing empowered me so much. And if I could push that, you know, use that passion and and start a company. And I thought that we were going to sell a whole, you know, systems and all this kind of stuff. And so I jumped in and immediately started buying complete, you know, systems and, uh, you know, whole computers and everything else. And I was completely wrong and I could not sell those complete systems. I didn't know how to do it. It was, I was like, I just borrowed all this money. I didn't have any money. I put it all on my credit card and not until someone else asked me to buy a specific component and the cost that they were willing to pay for that component was almost the cost for the entire computer. Ah. Did, did I realize Oh, okay. The parts versus the whole. The parts are worth much more, and there, there's a much broader art, uh, audience for it as well, a customer base, and that's what got me in the parts business. And you know, if I hadn't jumped in and bought, I think I bought like ten computers, thinking I was going to, you know, start an empire. Uh, and, <laughs> but I wound up in printers and that kind of thing, and I wound up selling the logic board, the brains of the thing for about just about the whole cost because somebody didn't want the whole printer they wanted right. that that board um and it's stuck with me ever since i can envision myself sitting behind my computer answering that message on aol i really date myself there yeah now, but so you know i failed at selling complete systems but i learned how to sell the components and i built you know a 30-year career on that um so getting out and sucking at those first 20 tries and making those mistakes, it's it's so powerful. Well, so yeah. Powerful. And, it, and I mean, you're right. That's a perfect example of this. Dickie says in those first 20 reps, uh, you will learn the rules of the game and what winning and losing looks like. And that, that I mean, the first part, OK, the rules of the game, I get that. But the whole idea of what winning and losing looks like that is what blew me away because oftentimes when I start a project, I'll say, okay, I don't know how to do this, but I know what winning looks like. That's what I think in my head. That's and good. I'm often wrong about that. It, you know, I, 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 it takes me m- far more than the 20 reps to shake loose this grip on what my prior definition of winning was to realize, wait, wait, you're winning. It's just not what you thought. There's a whole different angle here. And And so having that in my head, this idea that I'm just going to start before I even know what winning means. I mean, losing, (laughs) losing is a much wider (laughs) pool of options, right? But even winning, it's not just one thing that's predefined or if it is predefined, you don't know it. So yeah, yeah, it's, that was fascinating. Um, It is. And he says- it, you know, the most important thing is that in those first 20 reps there, you will experience your first win. And that is all you need to get hooked. One of them will click. Yeah. You get the dopamine rush that makes you want to play forever. I, like, that's the key. I, it, and it I is. agree with him. It, and yeah. it, gets, it gets easier, I think, after you've done this a few times. And also, for me, after you've built up some financial reserves, you can you feel more comfortable. If it, it, and I'm coming from a product aspect because that's been my whole uh, you know in my wheelhouse, and so you could jump in and take a risk and immerse yourself and try to figure this stuff out, not knowing what the end game was going to be. Right, right, right. Um, no, I I and, love this I, I, taking action. It's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a big deal. And and then you know his total immersion thing. I. I the thing that really stood out to me was his thing is, hey, after your 20 tries at anything, you, you really, you know what you don't know, right? You, now you've, it's like your concept of what is winning. You're you're figuring that out. <laughs> yeah. And he points you to the, find who the best players of your game are. You know, he's he's using a YouTube, YouTube uh, uh, creator as an example, because he's trying to get that going for his business. You know, immerse yourself in their work, figure out how they did it. This is where the problem for me is came up came out and it's he says take their course listen to their interviews and 
I mentioned this to you when we started talking about doing this topic. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, I, I'm suspicious. And, and it, it's almost like your sense of you were talking about the story with the company, the asset management. If you just let them take it and they did all the work and they gave you 85%, that's a pretty good deal. But I'm always thinking I could do this better. Right. I can figure out things. I can figure out things independently. And I really have to work hard to overcome this because it, I can, uh, I have example after example, how it's held me back yes. and slows down my progress because I, I think I can do it myself and that's a mistake. And then you got to learn. So, uh, I had the same yeah. gut reaction here and thankfully it's not my claim. Right. And so with that in mind, it was like, okay, wait, I, if this were me, I, research. Yeah. I would be on the phone. Now I know the, the attorney that I spoke with actually gave some fantastic free advice, you know, about, Hey, you could probably do this on your own unless somebody's going to fight you, but I don't think they will. You just need to learn who to ask. So here's how it works. And he spelled the whole thing out for me before I ever paid him a dime. Right. And it was like, okay, I could, but, and if it were mine, I would, but I'm not convinced that that would be the best use of my time. Uh, yes, uh, you correct. know, cause I don't need to learn to be a lawyer. I have this inner desire to be a good lawyer, but I'm not, actually a lawyer at all. And I'm not going to invest the time to, to make that change to my status. So better to pay somebody who has put that time in. And, and that's what's happening here is, you know, gone that route. But if it were mine, I don't think I would have hired the attorney right away. I, and I, I would have tried to be the amateur expert. Uh, this is the toughest again. part for me. So, yeah. I have to, that's it. I have to consciously, I'm writing it on my quartet uh, board <laughs> that I have in front of me at all times. If you don't know what that is, search at uh, <laughs> businessbrain.show <laughs> and you'll find out yeah. how to change your life. Um, but yeah, you have to use those resources. And he's right, like paying somebody to learn what they are doing really well, it, it's a good investment. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, really jumping in. And so uh, I, I respect this uh, and, I, and I think he's totally right. The, the really, the, the thing I loved about it is he then talks about you create a one page worksheet about everything you've learned from during this immersion of who's doing the best job, finding somebody that's doing really well and, and trying to emulate it. This one page uh, sheet is kind of your roadmap. You know, what did they do? What did I learn in the course? What worked for them? What didn't? What, what other resources do I need to employ? That's really powerful and uh I, I just love that idea. No, I, I agree. I just I just wrote down on my uh, on my on my quartet here. Don't be an amateur expert, Dave. Seek oh, experience good. or farm it out, one way or the other. Yep. Like if I want to be an expert because that's worth it to me for the rest of my life or what you know the rest of the pro whatever. Okay, fine, but know that that's an investment that needs to happen. And if I yeah, if is. you know it's pick one or the other because like just bumbling around. I mean, look, I've had a lot of success bumbling around. I've also wasted a lot of time bumbling around. We forget the wasted time. We remember the success and some of that's really good. But right now at this point in my life, no, no, like farm it out to the expert, get it done fast. Don't spend the time learning. And uh, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I love this idea of the one pager. If, if you are going to choose to gain the experience, well, don't just do it on your own find someone who's the expert and and distill what they've done. Hey, you know what? We got a review this week from none other than Seth Goldstein. Seth Goldstein says, five stars, if this was on Podchaser, a great show. Dave and Shannon really break down what's facing small business owners in today's climate. I highly recommend. Thanks, Seth. We have something we'd like to recommend, too, because as Seth points out, entrepreneurship has its ups and downs. It's how we deal with the obstacles that make the difference between success and failure. And we're listening to a new podcast that helps us navigate that path. It's called Entrepreneur's Enigma. And who's it hosted by? Seth Goldstein, a former journalist. Every week, Seth interviews entrepreneurs from all walks of life about their journeys through entrepreneurship, the ups, the downs, and how to deal with them. Episodes of Entrepreneur's Enigma drop every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Eastern. Check out entrepreneursenigma.com or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks, Seth. And hey, if uh, 
you want to leave us a review, do that, please. We, In fact, we would like you to leave us. We want you to leave us a review. <laughs> Go to businessbrain.show slash reviews. That will get you as close as we can to leaving us a review over there on Apple Podcasts. That would be fantastic. And there's a link in the show notes uh, for this as well. But uh, but yeah, thank you, Seth, and and thanks to everybody who who leaves us reviews. It really makes a difference for uh, for everything that we do here in the show. All right, uh, step three, right? Yeah, absolutely critical. It, it is critical. Uh, Dickie Bush says, as we said before, iterate and improve. He sa- he says iterate and tighten your feedback loops. At this point, you've distilled what somebody else is doing. You've had your first twenty reps. You've had your first success. At this point, you're a solid player, and that means you're competing with other solid players. And the only difference between the good players and the great players, how quickly you can continue to improve. This is super important, right? Like the idea of getting to the point where you're good enough to not be terrible is fine, but other people are going to improve past that, and you need to do it as well. To continue to level up, Dickie Bush says, Choose the right next thing to learn and then quickly learn that thing and then move on to the next thing and repeat that cycle again and again. I love it. Yeah, I do too. You know, my take on this is like spending your time reading generic business books or taking courses on how to succeed or how to start a business. Rather, as you get going, because you've taken that action, you're already in it or you're immersing yourself and you get going, figure out what specifically is holding you back at any one point of this game and and, fig, and focus on learning how to break through what that bottleneck is. So if you're uh, in the case, you know, I don't know if you're an online guy like uh, Mr. Bush and you're you're not reaching people or they're not finding you. And let's say the search engine optimization is your bottleneck. Okay. Figure out how to learn enough about that to either fix it yourself or hire someone that can help you fix that problem. Instead of going and reading, you know, how to be successful or, you know, how to, how to build a great online business. You have limited time. Focus on learning what you need to do to break through those bottlenecks. I like it. It's powerful. Yeah, it is. And it's, that's a hard thing to do. And a good skill for our business brains to have is having a little success and then stopping and saying, okay, yes, I've had some success. I broke through whatever I needed to break through. Now, what am I not good at? What am I not doing well? Or what are we as a company not good at or doing well? Those are important questions to continually ask. And yet... They are so hard to ask because you don't want to admit, I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to say you, I don't want to admit that I'm not good at something, right? Like it's, it's just this innate thing and it's stupid. I like, it's just stupid, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes back to what we talked about, I think on last week's show about giving yourself permission to, to say goodbye. I think that was, oh yeah, that was one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a don't waste your time doing something if after, you know, watching a movie for 20 minutes and it's garbage, turn it off. If you start reading a book and it sucks, stop reading it. Well, you know, don't just read general stu- general things about your business. Read things that are going to help you get solve specific problems. In other words, maybe be a specialist uh, about solving these kinds of problems versus just learning generic, you know, generic yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it's yeah, a great tip. Uh, you know. Now, Dick, Dickie right. says something interesting that, that basically sort of wraps up uh, this, this concept. He says the best players are keenly self-aware, which is, I think if there was one concept that we have developed and come back to and used as a foundation for this show for seven plus years, it's this pursuit of self-awareness. I, I don't know. I, I certainly uh, am not an expert at it. Uh, I fail at it all the time, but I want to be better at it. I, 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 at this point, I think I, I understand what it is. So I understand what winning is. That took a while, but I'm, I'm there, you know, but he says the key, best players are self worth. They play, they identify a bottleneck. They surgically solve that bottleneck. And to your point, that word surgically, that's key. Solve the right thing. Don't just learn general stuff. Then repeat the cycle. Their feedback loops are 10x faster than the average player, 
And this compounds day after day after day. This is the goal. I, I love this. This was, this was one of those yeah. things that really resonated with me. Yeah. The, the last thing, last comment I have about this, yeah. what I, I respected about this thread too, is he, he put some credibility out there in the beginning to show how he's used it to be successful at, at certain things that may not, uh, well, I guess, yeah, some of these are pretty important, but even but not even all of goes them all the way back. Yeah. yeah. Even he goes back to when he was 11 years old to becoming a pro speed cuber. I imagine that's a Rubik's cube. Type I think thing that's solving. right. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then, and then becoming a top 100 call of duty for player. So, you know, my takeaway is that he's using his business brain from the time he's a little kid as, as you grow and, and adding to his talent stack. And then now you can see him adding to his, uh, excuse me, his revenue stack, by sharing all this, these details. And, uh, I think it's great. I love the concept. I shared it with my kids this morning. Yeah. Got some great feedback from them as well as I'm programming them to, uh, to think like this. And, uh, yeah, it's I'd key. love to hear my, my kids were the think. first ones I sent it to. And then, and yeah. then I sent it to you. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. We'd love to hear your story. What do you think about this feedback at businessbrain.show? Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong, and please do go leave us a review. Yeah, he said feedback at businessbrain.show. It is, ah, we love hearing from you. Send in your stuff, send in your thoughts. Check out our sponsors, shopify.com slash SBS. And if, if nothing else, do me a favor. Keep living that charmed life, would you?